Right, James, yep. we're back. We've got yep. another commission roundup for you. Let's have a look. Plenty of models. Um, the list is so stacked that we're able to start with a platinum painted Lord Solar. I absolutely love this model. So have a look at that. Yeah. I think a robo horse in 40k is probably one of one of the greatest ideas ever. Um, you can't get more imperial than a guy on a giant armored metallic robotic horse. Um, yeah, no, I mean Adam has absolutely smashed this. Um, I do really like that the gold or the NMM is like very ancient looking. It's quite um, it's quite kind of like uh, regal. It's got like, it's really warm as in the tones that are in it, but. Um, but I, I love the fact that it looks like an antique. So it shows kind of the age of the horse and um, the fact that he's used different kind of colors and tones to distinguish kind of like the, the sort of wings on the front and the iconography uh, against the, the gold is just something that I really, really like. Um, again, yeah. the, the white super porcelain kind of like clean looking horse, just uh, just look, even though it is a robo horse, just, uh, <laughs> just is, just does that does it really good. The, uh, the client was like, super brief on their spec yeah they basically said i'm getting a platinum level lord solar build it like the box i want the colors to look like the box basically they wanted the box art equivalent but at our platinum level which yeah. obviously adds in all the nmm and stuff like that yeah of course yeah yeah um and and did you know what one of the things i do really like is the very subtle almost like ghostly cold blue kind of like Cloth that he's got on his undersuit. So if you look at the trousers and the just underneath, he's sort of like I'm going to call them riding gloves. So I don't really know. <laughs> Is that the official name? I, I don't really know what else to call them, but I'm going to call them riding gloves. Um, but that under, sounds right. That might be the official name. Under, I, I, I'll ask me, but under, <laughs> but I don't know what the. I don't know what the term is, but yeah, I'm going to go with riding gloves. I'm, I'm guessing the grip on the sword must be pretty good with the gloves as well. So, um, so yeah, but um, but yeah, it's it's really really lovely. Like, and um, it's all, all of the blending is, is super 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 smooth as well. Uh, like with the secondary reflections and things on the different areas of the sort of the armor and also the head crest or the armored neck. Um, you know, that doesn't that horse hasn't got its mane now either as well. So it's got an armored mane. I think that's a new bit of terminology for this video as well. But. Um, <laughs> But um, but yeah, and um, again, we can't overlook the lovely cape as well. We've got this really deep crimson reddish cape as well, which is just really nice, um, which I do do really really like. It's not like you to focus on the red elements of the you, model. You, you know me, yeah, you know. Again, all the, the, the you can tell it's like one of those the the horse, even though he's like very clean and calm looking, he's got like these giant red lenses as well. So he's pretty pretty evil looking with the lenses as well. Um, and you can't overlook the base. I mean, you know, what what way to finish off and complement a model than a Reva Titan head on the base? <laughs> um, you know, uh, but again, I love the fact that it's done a very, very kind of um, sort of contrasting to the sort of cleanliness and the brightness of the model, this really dark kind of copper trim uh, with the verdigris just on, on that as well. And it's all obviously NMM, the copper trim. Um, and again, using like really little like specks of red on some of the damaged lenses inside the head as well, which is great. Um, and, and just even the amount of texture and stuff and detail that's been done on the full of masonry and the column next to the reaver head. Um, it's just loads of interesting little details and marks and, and sort of texture on that. So what a way to finish uh, the first model here, then looking at this amazing flat robo horse to lead uh, a, a, an astromilitarium army. Yeah, it's a solid example of uh, what you can get up flat here, especially with the NMM uh, all over the place. Uh, and we're going from that to some silver level uh, soul grinders. Zinc, um, Zinchian giant turkey robo, robo <laughs> Zinchian. Yeah, more there. robots. More um, robots. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As I say, um, silver level. They were, these were actually built by the client yeah. when they were sent in. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if there's potentially some conversion on that head. I'm I not 100 sure. I think sure. the head is the head is converted, but the I think the rest of the kit is pretty standard. But um, but uh, I mean, what a phenomenal job that size done on this. So I think. Representing like raw muscle, raw, raw muscle, like with all the sinew and stuff. But like, I think he's done a great job just just with all the colours and tones that are on there. And yeah. again, you, like with Zinch, obviously bright, bright, vibrant colours. The use of the green on the sort of gems as well on the head crest it just is, is is really really nice. Um, I think the attention to all the metal, so you can see the amount of sort of scuffs and nicks and and sort of the way that it's scratched and damaged just is, adds a lot of interest to those as well. I think sometimes. Metallics can can often be left till last on, on a, a lot of time when you see painting. I think that the attention that's been put on these is just really great, just to show that he's um he's obviously been up close and personal quite a bit. But um also but, you talk about the 
the painting and the muscles and things. Um, and when you go between that and we've got a second one here, he's had to do it in two different colours as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so which is quite look, cool when they, the one. when they are, are next to each other, having some kind of unique identifier is quite nice. Yeah, these are great. Um, and yeah, exactly the same with regards to sort of like the sinew and stuff on the skin, but obviously that more more notorious kind of like blue kind of tinching kind of colour. But then using that green on the eyes as well, just to obviously denote those and pick those out. Um, again, the same tension on all the metal works as well. I love the use of the, like the tone variance here on this claw as well, just shows kind of like the age of bone as well, which is quite nice. Um, and, and just a real sort of a, a bit of interest as well, like this, these metallics here, like the, the barrels on the weapons. The use of like a, like a lilac -y purple kind of tone on those just to show a bit of a, that, that purple hue that a lot of Zinchi models tend to have. Um, so it's really cool as well. You've got it on these sort of kind of reverse smokestacks here on the back. Um, but what an interesting model, something totally different. You don't see you don't see soul grinders all the time, especially ones that are converted to Zinch. Yeah, so, um, it's, a, it's a cool thing as well because we originally started working on this. It's, it's for a Thousand Sons Army. Yeah, yeah. And um, we started working on that about four years ago. We did the first project, I think, with this client. Yeah. Um, and then he's come back fairly recently and started adding a little bit more. Um, there is a lot more to go, like to come with these. So maybe we'll do a full army showcase on the channel at some point when it's all done. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's always cool to like add to an army that when, when that much time has passed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to get the consistency bang on as well is something that's really, that's really sort of like something that we do quite a lot. Um, so yeah, no, this is brilliant. And again, you can see all the, the, the use of the green on the pipes on the back is also quite cool as well. Just again, those little spot colours just to know the kind of little details that are on there. But yeah, no, awesome model. Very nice. Um, so we went from double robots to, uh, we're sticking with blue for the next one. We had on the last one of these, um, a avatar yeah there was an Alatoc avatar, avatar yeah. um and we were kind of gushing about how we'd never really seen one that, that done that perfectly before um for the same client part of the same army we've got four more eldar characters yeah um i mean you're welcome to, to pick pick and choose which ones you want to look at gonna first go, gonna go with the autark first these were painted by amy again yeah. um and there is also with these similar to the thousand sons there's a full army coming so maybe an army showcase in the future I've always, always really liked the kind of marbled, almost like, it's like a camouflage, but not like a marbled armour kind of scheme that they have, which I think is just, is, is really cool. And the attention to detail that Amy's put into that is just exemplary, really, really great. Um, I do love a blended blade, and this one doesn't disappoint with that sort of turquoise to midnight kind of blue kind of colour, uh, which is great. So the, the marbling that you're talking about, like all over the armour, yeah. that's the only character so far that that features on, because we actually... We worked with a client a little bit back and forth to try and fit certain requests within their budget and things like that. Um, and we ended up saying that obviously doing that kind of level of freehand over an entire army yeah. um, takes a lot of time. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, yeah, it is a lot of work. Yeah, that, so um, after a little you know discussion, we wanted to try and meet as close as what we can to, to the what they wanted within their budget. And we, um, we settled on just doing some of this freehand on some of the more significant characters and things. So out of this four, um, that's the only model that's going to have the free hand on it. Yeah. Um, it's nice. It's, you know, it's really nice. It's not like super garish. It's really nice and subtle, but you can definitely see that it's there and it adds a lot of interest to the model. Um, the, the fact that the yellow, the yellow is quite vibrant. It's not like screaming yellow, but it's, it's like a really nice uh, yellow that complements the rest of the, of the sort of miniature. Um, it takes a lot for me to like a yellow yellow armor on a model yeah i think it has to be particular it's so specific for me to actually really like it and uh that's perfect to yeah me. yeah it's great the, all the highlight stages are really nice and visible on it as well which is great and and I, i'm a big fan of the bone kind of ivory kind of weapons as well it really nods to that kind of like early second edition kind of look of the guns uh with that kind of wraith bone kind of color on them which i think is, is really really nice um and, and also snow basing do, do you know what i don't I've not seen a lot of Elder projects with snow basing. It just goes um, so well with yeah, this colour scheme as well. Yeah, yeah. I think because you've got so many tones and colours on the model, you've got that, that, that sort of triad primary colour um, scheme on there anyway. Um, just just having up a bit of a neutral kind of base just works really nicely with the overall composition of the model and the army. Um, so yeah, great, phenomenal model. Um, um, do you want to have a look at yeah, let's any have, of the others? Let's have a look. Uh, Who else you got there? So Illic Nightspear. Um, 
character that you don't really see very often, being honest. Um, and uh, I've got to say that for, for a fine cast model, Amy has done a phenomenal job of painting this up. Um, they, again, this model is not one of the most easily accessible models. I think we did have to have a bit of a hunt around to get it for our client. I absolutely love the pose because it really fits in with his kind of like stealthy kind of vibe and character. You read a bit about him, but um, yeah, I do really, really like this model. And if, you, if you've not seen it, Illich before, um, if you can get one, it's just a really, really cool uh, miniature just to have as part of your collection. Just a really, really different kind of Eldar model. Um, yeah, whether... it's, a, it's a quite a unique pose for from the Eldar range as well i think it's not it breaks everything up a little bit yeah something a little bit different to paint yeah it definitely is and again i absolutely love the cream uh, or the ivory just on the on the weapons um it screams kind of like second edition as i mentioned and um just just it's a completely high contrast color to the armor um and the the leather the cloak that he's got or the, the sort of material cloak that he's got in that dark brown is a really rich dark brown which i think is just really nice compared to the vibrant sort of blue that for the armor paneling reminds um, me a little bit of the one that you get in blackstone fortress yeah a little bit actually i can't remember the character's name yeah the, the, old, probably... tan, the old tan lady yeah, yeah. um yeah she, yeah very similar to that um but yeah I, I just love i love the elegance of like him just resting his hand on the on the masonry as well which i just think is just it's a really 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 cool pose um, so yeah, that's Illic Knight Spear. Then we've got um, we've got obviously a Farseer in painted in the uh, Latot scheme. Um, probably one of the most iconic uh, New Age Eldar models in my mind. Um, if you think back to the old Metal Seer Council, like this model would would fits in perfectly with those, um, and just again a really graceful kind of pose. But again, that really good use of color that Amy's done across the miniature with the with the shoulder pads, the head crest, um, and and the helm obviously in yellow. And you've got that blue face plate just to break up the head, which I think is just really, really nice. Um, all the gems and soul stones, or soul stones, should I say, being red as well, just, just marry into that triadic primary colour scheme, just works really nicely. And again, you've got that consistency of blade colour through the army with that, that teal, turquoise, and kind of dark midnight blue. Um, but yeah, really refined highlights across all of the cloak as well. And uh, some lovely, lovely subtle shading that's just been done on that. So yeah. Again, I don't know if I mentioned, but they're all silver level. Yeah. All, the, all the four characters yeah. here silver level. So that's the minimum quality you can expect on a character from us on the siege side of the brand. But um, but Obviously, the, the altar had the additional freehand as yeah. well, which is a separate thing. Yeah. But, um... And then last up, we've got uh, something a little bit different for uh, this force, which is a Death Jester, but also painted in the Latox scheme. So no free hand diamonds on this chap, but a really great use of the Latox scheme to add interest to the different details that are on the Death Jester model. So um, again, I do really love the super, super clean inside cape, uh, sort of like a desaturated white, uh, which is really nice. Um, and again, you've got the lovely use of yellow and blue, just those light up colours on the back. So you've got the, the, the tassel part obviously in yellow, and then we've got the main part of the cloak in that deep, rich blue with the super sharp highlighted and tone, tonal variants done with some soft shading, which is just nice. Is um, the uh, is the Death Jester often worked into normal Elder Forces as well? Because I, I, I always, I don't know if it's just how it's normally seen, but I always just thought it was part of the Harlequins thing. I know they all kind of intertwine a little bit, but... Yeah, I, I don't really, I mean, I, I, all cards, I don't really know Elder, Elder like, army composition that well. Yeah. Um, I just can't, can't say I've personally seen yeah, someone right. doing a laytop one. Yeah, um, I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen uh, a lot of people using Death Chesters in, in Elder armies before, but it's really cool. One of the things that, for me... I the am, commenters will let us know, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, certain. Let, let us know in the comments. But one thing I, I will say that, I, for me, is something that just, just on the model, I mean, Amy's done a great job over on everything on this model, but one thing I do love is a little detail that only up until recently I started noticing was that actually embedded in the wall that he's standing on, you've got some shuriken. So actually the, the, the rounds that shuriken weapons fire are actually embedded into the wall, which I think is something that, again, you just... Little details like that really, really um, finish the model off went nicely. And Amy's even fully edge highlighted those metallic shards there just really well. Um, so yeah, just a, a lovely model. And the, the gems, again, being in red, just really high contrast to the rest of the colours and tones that are on there. So that's the awesome Death Jester. Yeah, nice. Um, obviously, like I say, a full army coming along with that. Can't so wait to see that. At some point, yeah, full showcase probably. Um, We've touched on custom service stuff on here before. Yeah. We've got two more to show um, today. We're going to start off with the smaller of the two, which is this. Uh, it's a custom Raven Guard chaplain. Yeah. Um, it's Chaplain Called A, which is actually a character from the lore. Yeah. Shows up in a couple of short stories. So what's your instant thoughts on that? Lots of bones. 
Yeah, that, well, that's worked <laughs> into the character. That's part of the character's story. He kind of covers himself in these like additional bone armor yeah. pieces. Um, it's really interesting because you've got a nice combination of the Raven Guard heraldry and details, like, for example, the wings on the chest plate. Um, and obviously the, the beaked kind of helm, which is just really cool. Uh, I just think that's a really cool way of uh, just creating the the really unique um, head crest and helm that Corday has. The other thing that for me is really cool is, is at first, when I first glanced at this, when I first saw it, before um, uh, before realising it was the model that it is, I, I, because of the bones, it might instinctively makes you think of Legion of the Damned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But obviously a chaplain as well. A chaplain is known, chaplains are known for having skulls and bones and things on them. So... Um, so yeah, I do love the extra trim that's been added to the armor as well, just to add a bit of like in intricate detail into the miniature. So you can see obviously around the, the sort of like on the shin plates, uh, you've got these lovely sort of trims on the on the bottom half and these little studs and things, which are just really interesting. Um, so I think the armor is actually supposed to be quite ancient. Um, yeah. It's supposed to be from before the Horus Heresy oh, and wow. things like that. Um, uh, from what my understanding based on the client specs. So Adding those kind of trims and things probably just adds to that. Yeah. yeah, adds that to that era yeah. of, of the armor. Probably, that's awesome. You, you can see that, that obviously Ben's done the Raven Guard symbol on the pad as well. So a really intricate a Raven symbol just on that shoulder pad. And then, like you were saying, he collects bones and things. You've got like one of the skulls there, like a Raven or a bird skull, just on, on on his hip as well, which is just interesting. Um, again, loads of purity seals hanging down. Obviously, they're just part of the kit, but just loads of purity seals just on there. And then the jump pack's got all the bones and things on there on the on the, on the sort of thruster thruster ports and the intake on top of the intakes on top as well, which is just really cool. Um, so yeah, cannot wait to see this painted. And I, I just got to say, I love the pose as well. It looks like he's either either about to leap off the rock, <laughs> the tactical rock, which you, you can't forget, um, or he's just coming into land. So so again, really great attacking pose. Uh, which is just awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. With regards to that stuff, the client was pretty open. They they didn't even specify exactly what starting model they wanted. They just wanted it Primaris, and they wanted it not Phobos or Gravis. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's great. It's really really awesome. Um, so yeah, absolutely love forward that. Kind seeing of that one. Yeah. Painted. Yeah. Um, and then next up, we've got one that you were probably waiting to talk about. Um, which is all this Space Hulk stuff at, at the front here. Yeah. Um, we're not going to go for every single one um, because it's quite a lot of models it's there. It's a lot of models, yeah. Um, and, I, and as much as I, I'm quite confident I can name most of them, I don't want, I don't want to get any of them wrong. We could so, test you. No, if not. we had a bit more time, we could test <laughs> no, you. Um, let's not. Would you like to start by looking at the Gene Steelers or the Blood Angels? Let's, go, let's save the best two best two last for this part. Let's so you want to do the Blood Angels first? <laughs> let's, is that do the okay. let's do the uh, Steelers. Well, help yourself to, yeah. to so what takes your interest. Right, right from the beginning, like these Steelers from Space Hulk, uh, I know there's a lot of duplicates, but these Steelers are probably some of my favourite Gene Steeler sculpts that Games Workshop have ever done. Mm. Um, just because... There all there are some duplicates, but they're quite varied as well. And again, if you haven't seen these before, that they, they came in the I think it's the second edition of Space Hulk, if memory serves correct. I think this particular set is whatever the most recent they've reprinted. Yeah, it a few whatever times, the most yeah. recent iteration of that. I, be, I, I believe that's that's the case. I'm not yeah, 100 sure. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's have a look at these awesome Steelers uh, again from, from from the start. You've got really rather than bases specifically, they've all got different detail work. So you've got some gantry here that this this steel is just literally perched on um i do really like that it's a slightly more desaturated palette compared to the actual uh, blood angels and i think that's really nice because it kind of i think because they're darker and they don't have as, as much vibrancy compared to the blood angels it makes them look like the evil or the bad baddies essentially um yeah. it, it also really helps for the it's not one that you're holding at the moment, but the sculpts that have like Blood Angels pieces, yeah, it really helps those parts stand out. Yeah, um, there's a few Gene Steelers that are holding like helmets and things. Yeah, so the, the 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 posing on all of these is awesome. Like you've got obviously this this guy is just like perched a little bit, um, you know, which is which is him. And then we've got some, some really cool ones, like for example this chap here, which is again one I absolutely love, just like lunging down from the top of off the top of a bit of like a cabling or gantry, um, just about to pounce onto somebody, which is just awesome. <laughs> Um, They're all like really dynamic. Yeah, even I mean, the yeah. even the ones that are supposed to just look like normal standard gene uh, stealers, stealers uh, not doing anything particularly fancy. They still look very dynamic. Yeah, they're they're absolutely awesome. Um, again, I, I I love seeing these used in forty k just because it has so much variance to a unit when you've got like different. I mean, maybe not some of the ones that got massive pieces of gantry like this, but you've got some other ones in here that are just like got different kind of poses and stuff, and it just really adds a lot. So if we have a look at 
one. Like, so you can see the Blood Angel pieces I was talking about, yeah, yeah. Like, what they're holding them, yeah, standing you, on. You've got that really high contrast that's just been done on these. Um, but yeah, no, just, these these are awesome, like absolutely brilliant. They just ripped the head off of the Terminator there and just going for somebody else. So it's this guy. So let's have a look at the, the Brood Lord. So really, really haunched, haunched pose, which I think is great. Um, again, holding a skull in one hand, searching for another in the other hand, and then he's got a Terminator head. So he's all about he's all about collecting heads by the look of it. So, so yeah. But um, stood upon a mound of skulls and Terminator helms, which is just interesting. I like the way that also um, Niall's done a uh, like a bone coloured Terminator helm in there as well. So it's as if it's not just Blood Angels. It could even be a Deathwing Joe. Uh, so, well. So. <laughs> So there is I doubt a... they'd get wrapped up in something like that. I don't think you'd ever see that. The colours don't. There. The colours don't lie, yeah. Joe. Uh, so, so you're yeah. just getting confused because there's some skulls there. So yeah, playing. it's an optical <laughs> illusion. Yeah. yeah, but no, really, really well painted on Nile. And uh, um, Broodlords, obviously, there's a couple of different versions of the kit, but this this one for me is probably one of my favourites, just because it's it looks slightly more aggressive in my mind. Um, but yeah, absolutely love uh, Broodlord to lead the Steelers from this yeah. course. We've been putting it off for long enough, Joe. So yeah, I mean, let's get the timer going because you could go on forever. <laughs> um, right, we're going to start with um, the main man from the Terminators first. We've got to start with Calistarius. So okay. yeah, so for any of you that don't know, Calistarius uh, is what Mephiston was called before he became a Mephiston. Um, it's a really in, in, cool little fact about about you know, him as a character. He obviously is in the Space Hulk set, but in his previous iteration before he can, became Chief Librarian. Um, so this is him. Again, really cool pose, advancing down some stairs. I love the super dark blue armour. So for me, um, I just prefer Librarian armour when it's when it's typically a little bit darker than, than sort of like the really vibrant blue, um, just because it offsets those red, red shoulder pads really nicely. But Niall's done an exemplary job with all the painting on these miniatures. You can see the amount of tension that's just... just as a tiny example, all the text that's done on the scrolls and purity seals and things like that, even including a little tiny blood angel symbol just on one of the pages of the book as well, which is just really cool. Um, but yeah, like the attention to detail, even on just like the chevron pipe, um, really sharp, consistent uh, sort of detailing on each of those stripes, plus also the, the, the highlight on the pipe as well, the volumetric highlight on there. Um, but again, really, really cleanly executed. Little things like, for example, the little gems and, and lights and stuff on the back of the suit, on the sort of belt buckle, rear belt buckle, are done really nicely. And we've got a very subtly blended, uh, brush blended blade here as well, just with some nice tonal variants. Uh, but that's Calistarius, or soon to become Mephiston when he falls to the, falls to the rage. Um, uh, Let's go. I'll next. give you two more. Two more. You're allowed okay. to pick two, two more, more up okay. to talk about. Otherwise, we'll be here forever. So yeah, that's no, fine. So we're gonna go with uh, with Bra um, Oh, I don't know. Actually. Oh, let's maybe go. that maybe let's, I made the wrong choice. Eh? Let's, now gonna take let's a while. go with Gideon because Gideon is awesome. Um, Gideon's one of the Terminator sergeants, um, obviously wielding a thunder hammer and this really amazing uh, storm shield. Uh, but again, you can see the amount of attention to detail it's been done. These models are for, for like standard models that come in that what essentially equates to a, a, a board game. Essentially, what the, what this version is because they don't have obviously the normal bases uh, for sort of like tabletop play. These models are so detailed; uh, it's it's literally unbelievable. They have so much going on with them, and and really, each Terminator does kind of even like the standard rank and file Terminators do kind of equate to to being um, like a character. The amount of detail that they have, but yeah, Gideon obviously with his name on his chest plate and also on his shield there. All the lovely Balanite diamonds, obviously in that purplish reddish hue, which is just really cool. Um, so that's uh, that's Gideon, and then I've only got one more. Choice. One more choice. Yeah, you can pick one more. Um, let's go for Brother Zale with the flamer. Um, if any of you have watched some of the funny parody videos that are on YouTube, you'll remember um, Brother, Brother Zale with the flamer. But yeah, the heavy flamer toting Brother Zale. Um, do like the use of um, of all of the, the the sort of blues and things on the gems, which just work really nicely. Um, it's quite convenient that he is covered in parchment when he's wielding a flamer. But, um, but, uh, but I yeah. don't want to get into the flammable debate again that <laughs> yeah. we had on the podcast yeah. a few no, years, that's uh, a while ago. But, but he's, he's awesome, obviously, just bearing down on the target, just turning to fire the heavy flamer at a target. Um, but yeah, one of, one of my favourites uh, from, from the Space Hulk kit. But yeah, this, you yeah. can see the amount of attention that, that uh, Niles lavished across every sort of detail on these miniatures. Yeah. It's probably um, fairly obvious, but the client obviously just asked for for us to match the box art colours as much yeah. as possible within yeah. the levels. Um, I think it's a good example of that. We've got one more. Yeah. It is um, 
a beefy custom <laughs> model. Yeah. Um, there's some magnetization on here specifically with the base because it's we've done the um, the kind of Horus Heresy character series style thing of the it gaming attaches. base pulling out. So yeah, yeah. just be careful when you're picking this one up. That's fine. Um, okay. Because the back detaches. Yeah. Um, so this bit of an interesting story behind yeah, this. Yeah. Tell me about this one. So. We when we booked it in, we thought it was just going to be a custom Lionel Johnson model. Someone wanted to make their own version of Lionel Johnson. Yeah. Once we received the spec from the client, it turns out actually what it is is it's a paladin from World of Warcraft. That's amazing. It's their own. It's their original character from World of Warcraft, um, which was called Lionheart. That's amazing. Um and. They saw the Lion model and obviously thought it would be perfect for their uh, to, to bring their World of Warcraft character to life. Um, I'm not too familiar with World of Warcraft. No, I'm not either, to be honest. Isn't yeah, no. huge. However, Adam in the office is, and he was pointing out all the specific details on this model and things that are pulled from the game and stuff like that. So the biggest things that we were asked to do by the client, they were very specific, is that the weapon yeah. is a is a known weapon in the game called the Ashbringer. Right. It's okay. quite an iconic weapon that we had to bring to life. Yeah. And the judgment armor set as well. So that's why there's so much specific sculpting all over the armor. It's to yeah, make yeah. it look exactly how it looks in the game. And having seen the reference images, I am actually shocked how much it is spot on. So I've seen the reference images for this and yeah, I, I right from the get-go, you, you can see how much care that Steve has put into the the, the sculpting for, for all the details that are on this. Um, I don't really know where to start with it because there's so much that's actually awesome about it. Like um, the scrolls and all the parchments and things, that the, the refinement of the, of the of the work that's been done on the green stuff on there is just really, really great. Um, you know, and, and I think some things like the sharpness of details, like for example, the flame on the chest, or you've got that almost like the temp bar, kind the stretched kind of temp bar cross on the belt buckle as well, which is really cool. Um, that little like orb, as far as I know, it's supposed to be like floating on the on the sword. Basically, it's a it's a floating uh, disc. Yeah. Um, so think... it's like a disc that goes in. It's not like a sphere or anything. Yeah, but, um, but we can't obviously make something float in midair. But the use unfortunately, of the... No, not, no. No. but the use of the flames to kind of make we're it good. Work. We're not we're not that good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There was some some reference images that had some kind of flames um, around the the disc or around the blade. So we kind of worked that into the design. Yeah, and all the little runes and things on the blade. Uh, as well on the side of the blade which is really good, nicely executed so they're really sharp and defined which is great I've got it I've got it like I know the model obviously all the work is on the model is, is really exquisite but the use of the of the Horus Ascended base as well I think that was something quite important for the client as well just just so they have yeah like, the, the client was very specific about every element of this model pretty yeah. much um, which is what you can do with, with any level here really but especially at custom service you kind of have free reign to say I want this and then we have to work out a way to do it the best way to do it um, yeah. as long as it fits within the banding the custom yeah. service banding then we kind of work out how to do it from there and yeah. yeah that base came in very handy yeah it's a great great really really sort of um, you know uh, iconic base that just has a lot of detail on it which again to, when this is fully finished and fully painted it's just going to look amazing with the, the contrast of all the bone work and then with the colour of the armour as well from what I've seen but um, but yeah that's an exciting one to to, to see develop into a, into a finished model um, uh, yeah, so it's probably very, very warm for you because you love Lionel Johnson. So seeing him in that kind of form is, is really interesting as well. Yeah, I mean, I still think it looks really cool. Yeah. Um, obviously, I was particularly excited about a custom Lionel Johnson coming in. <laughs> However, if we're going to get anything instead of that, then I'm glad it's this. Yes, yeah. a very cool model. So that's everything for this week. That's brilliant. Really great selection of miniatures. So I do hope that you've liked this roundup showcase of all the things we've got in it. Um, if you are interested in a commission bit for a character or an army, then please do not hesitate in getting in touch in the link in the description of this video. Um, I hope you liked everything you've seen in the video. And from all of us here at Siege, a massive thank you for watching the video. From Joe and myself, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.